Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Trending Reviews. So super excited today to introduce the brand new gimbal from Fayotech, which is a more updated, feature-packed and advanced version to this AK2000. It is called the AK2000S. One of the biggest differences is the visual one. So as you can see here from the box, it comes with a detachable versatile arm to give you a more comfortable grip when shooting low angle videos. On the topic of grips, the main handle actually comes in this very nice looking light rosewood wooden design grip, which you can't really find on any other gimbal. So pretty excited with this. Let's go ahead and give you an unboxing. Now I love it when they come with these really solidly built hard cases. They look like a nice little briefcase. So they have a little clip here. You just unclip that. There we go. So this is everything that comes in the box. There's a lot of stuff here. So let me just go through it. You have the actual tripod stand, which is a metallic, has rubber grips on the sides. So I'll be uh, mounting this at the bottom. You also have the main gimbal here, which I'll go through in a second. This is the uh, detachable arm, which I'm gonna be connecting shortly. You also have a release plate, which is a longer one than the usual one. You also have the smaller mounting plate as well. So this is to give you quick access to remove and attach your camera. You also have this, which is the uh, lens mount. So if you wanted to use the automatic motor system to change the zoom levels, then you can rest your lens on this. Right, so this is the uh, follow focus motor. Now it is a uh, follow focus and zoom motor hybrid. So it comes with this little extension here in the box. There's a little extension tube. And also you have the tube mount here to make sure it all connects together. And this is for your lens. So you can uh, zoom in and out using the knob on the actual gimbal. Now elsewhere in the box, you have the various different accessories that allow you to use this uh, zoom motor here. So if you wanted to follow focus and zoom using the knob, then you have to put all of these pieces together, connect the actual strap to your lens as well. And then you have USB cable, Allen key, some screws, etc. And then lastly, you have this nice little pouch. Let me go ahead and show you what's in here. So a whole bunch of things. Now you have various different USB connectors. As you can see here, there's two USB ports that come on the gimbal. So here you have USB connectors for the following different cameras. You have one for the Canon 5D Mark IV camera. You have the Sony ones, a default Canon one, a Nikon and an EOS one. You also have a 3.5 millimeter microphone adapter as well. And then you also have one for the USB-C charging cable as well. So the actual gimbal will be charged using USB-C and I'll be showing you the port in a second. So this is basically covering you for whichever camera you have. And if you wanted to control your camera with the gimbal using the cable, then you can do that using the USB port on there. And pretty much you'll be covered with all of the options that come with it. And you also have various different screws and Allen keys to make sure you can connect everything to your camera. Now, the main thing is the actual gimbal. Let me just pull that out. There you go. You can see the nice little wooden design on the grip there multi-function buttons all around you also have the uh, charging port here which is USB-C let me just zoom in a little bit there so this takes about an hour and a half to fast charge and give you a huge total of 14 hours of operation it is 18 watt charging so that is an awesome level of battery life so pretty solid design. It's uh, not too heavy. It's actually the same weight as the AK2000, which is 1.2 kilograms. So it's uh, pretty lightweight. You can carry it quite easily. Obviously I will be attaching the uh, versatile arm to it as well. So you can see all of the different features that come with this. So let me go ahead and set this all up and uh, give you a full overview. All right guys, so just to give you an overview of the buttons on the actual gimbal and a bit of the design. So you have all of the axes here. They each come with a lock switch. So there's the pan axis lock switch there. It's a little gray slider. You can see if I just zoom in a little bit. So I can lock it like this, unlock it like that. So that's for the tilt and the roll axis. They have it there as well. So I have them all unlocked at the moment. As I mentioned earlier, you have two USB ports here for the uh, follow focus uh, functionality. It comes with the adapter cable. And then you also have the uh, camera ports here. 
So if you want to use the gimbal connected via the USB cables provided, then you can use either camera one, which is USB-C, or camera two, which is the traditional USB. So as you can see there. Now I've got the long plate already added onto the uh, gimbal there. It's sliding at the moment, but I have the release plate on the bottom of my Sony a7 III already, so I can easily attach it onto the actual plate there, and I can just tighten it and close it off right there from the top. So this has a little lock as well. So depending on how you're stabilizing it, you can actually just clip it in, put that into the lock position and tighten it up there. Now going ahead, showing you the uh, buttons on the front. So you have your main joystick. You can move the gimbal around once you power it on. The first button here on the left is the mode button. A single tap will switch it between pan mode and lock mode. A double tap will make it into follow mode and a triple tap will make it into all follow mode. Then you have the uh, shutter button there in the middle. If you press halfway, you can focus it. Obviously that's only compatible with certain cameras and you can do a single tap to start the uh, video recording or take a picture. If you long press this for five seconds, it can do an automatic burst shot. But again, you have to press it to quit out of that mode. The last one here on the right hand side is the function button. You can uh, single tap to switch between video and photo modes. On the right hand side, you have the USB-C charging port there, and you also have the power button. Now for the power button, you have to long press to turn this on and off. I'm just going to power it on now. You can also control the touchscreen with this power button. So a single tap would lock and also unlock the screen. So in case you wanted to uh, take some videos or take some pictures, you don't want to accidentally rub your fingers across it, you can lock the screen. Press again the single tap, it will unlock it, so you can use that to change the different modes and go into the different settings. If you double tap, it will go into standby mode. As you can see, it's gone into standby mode there. And if you single tap, it will come out of standby mode. So, very straightforward. And then you also have the battery uh, life there on the top right hand side. You can swipe and uh, change the um, white balance and the ISO there. If you swipe to the other way, you can go into inception mode, selfie mode, portrait mode, etc. And it also has a motion time lapse as well. And then you can change it into selfie mode from here as well. So, all right, guys, so these silver locks that I've shown you, the three different switches, if you manually wanted to lock any of the axes, you can actually switch that on and then turn it into locks position and that part won't move. Now, the trigger button at the back, if you press and hold this, it will go into follow mode. If you double tap, it will reset into the right position. So if I just move this to there, double tap the back, it will reset as usual standard on most gimbals. If you triple tap, it will reverse into selfie mode, as you can see here. Double tap and it will reset back again. Now the multifunction knob here on the left hand side, it controls the, all of the three different axes by pressing it once. So right now, you can see it's got the tilt axis. If I press it, it'll go up and down, press it again, it'll go side to side. So you can change that accordingly. Now, if you do long press, it will control the focus and zoom motor. So I don't have that set up because I don't have a zoom lens on this camera at the moment, but you'll be able to do that using this as well. Now, in terms of the settings, if you swipe left, you'll be able to see various different options. If you swipe twice, then there's tons of options here, brightness and different types of lighting conditions that you can change on, a, on the camera. If you swipe again to the right hand side, you can go into multiple options and then you can go into the actual settings as well. So from here you can do calibrations, language and so on. Swiping left, you can change the shooting modes, default, smooth, action. You can customize ones. If you go back, you can change the payload settings, knob settings it can be controlled from here as well. So there's multiple different things you can do. So I'll leave a link in the description below on the full user guide. So you guys will be able to go and check all of the different options that come with this gimbal and have a look and read of them yourselves. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to attach the uh, detachable arm here, so make it a little bit easier. Now it comes with different screws. There's three screws you have to do, so there's two on the left hand side and there's one here on the right hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up with these screws that come in the box and I'll have to use the allen key as well to tighten them up. And I will do that by turning off the gimbal first and then connecting it.
All right guys, so the versatile arm is in place. So I'll be able to hold it and start shooting video like so. So this is very convenient. It makes the grip very strong. Now the very last thing I want to do is I want to utilize the cable that came with this. This is the USB-C to micro USB adapter. Now, as I showed you earlier, there is a camera one USB-C port in there. I'm going to attach the USB-C one to this one and the other end will go into my micro USB port into my Sony camera here, like so. And the last thing I need to do is basically just turn it on and it should recognize it's giving you the message and it is ready to go. So I can now control my camera using the uh, on-screen buttons on the gimbal. So now I'm ready to record. So I can just hit the record button here. It's now started recording. I can maybe use the joystick, just pan around quickly. Maybe use the multifunction knob. And then let's just see how this looks. So now that everything is set up, it's ready to go. So let's move on to some sample footage and take a look how smooth this is. You say that you don't need me. You say let's take things slowly. I hope you realize you're playing with the fire. I know what heartbreak feels like. I know I've shed some teardrops. I've been here before. So there you have it. This has probably been one of my favorite gadgets of 2019. It's an incredible upgrade to my AK2000 and I'll be using this throughout 2020 for sure. So I hope you guys found that useful. 
you saw some of the smooth footage i'm going to be showing you the full cinematic film from that same footage that's a cinematic christmas short film which i completely recorded using this gimbal and uh, i hope you guys like that and that will be linked down below as well i'll also leave a link in the description below of where you can purchase this it comes in around 450 dollars at the time of this video and they do worldwide shipping as well so do check them out and have a read through all of the different specifications, the tutorials and everything you need to know about this brand new gimbal. If you have any questions, drop them down below. Otherwise, I hope you like this video. I hope you subscribe for lots more camera gadget reviews in the future. And I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.